When we started this project called International Currencies and Capital Allocation, we had in mind a few big questions. Uh, one question was, what do global portfolios look like? Do foreign investors buy the same securities and invest in the same firms as domestic investors? And if they don't, is this uh, inefficient? Are they somehow missing out? And how do these patterns differ across countries? These types of questions are questions for which we have a lot of answers when it comes to equity markets. For example, there's a large literature on equity home country bias, and it's important in shaping portfolios. But when it comes to debt markets, we don't have many of these answers. And our work tried to fill this void by assembling a security level data set from about $30 trillion of mutual fund portfolio positions held all around the world that we obtained from Morningstar. And we bring this micro data to bear to answer the question or address the question, what drives cross-border capital flows in corporate bonds? And of all the new facts and patterns that we uncovered, one really jumped out to us as essentially the most at odds uh, with the conventional narrative, or at least at odds with, with commonly used models um, and our priors. And that was that the currency of denomination and assets proved absolutely essential and essential in interesting ways in explaining global portfolios. So we organize our findings around two facts. The first fact is that foreign investors are vastly overweight relative to, to market weights, uh, securities that are denominated in their own currency, something we refer to as home currency bias. And in fact, home currency bias is so strong and so pervasive in these data that knowledge of the, the currency of denomination of a security does a much better job at explaining who holds the security than even the nationality of the security's issuer, which we all know is, of course, the subject of that, that huge literature on home bias. Another way to think of this would be if I took our data set and focused only on the subset of bonds denominated in one particular currency, let's say British pounds, I would not find that the UK had significant home bias within that data set, if any. Now, why does this matter aside from telling us something about investment portfolios? It also matters because it tells us something about which firms get capital. In particular, we show that a subset of firms actually issue bonds in foreign currencies, a small subset of large firms. And home currency bias suggests that only those firms are getting funded from international capital, from foreign investment. Whereas by contrast, most of the firms are small or local, small or medium sized and issue only in their local currency. And those firms fund themselves predominantly, uh, if not entirely, from local investors, even in advanced economies, you know, with well-functioning capital markets and, and very much liberalized open capital accounts. The second fact is that we highlight there's one exception to these patterns in our data. And that's the US dollar. The global willingness to hold dollars in their portfolio means that the US has this special ability. Small and medium sized firms in the US that only issue in US dollars in local currency are uniquely able to place their debt into foreign portfolios. Now, you might think this benefit that the dollar and the status brings to the US has been around for 50, 60 years since Bretton Woods, maybe longer. But we actually find that as recently as 2005, only about 10 years ago, the euro seemed to play a somewhat similar role. The euro and the dollar in 2005 denominated similar shares of cross-border holdings of corporate bonds. But with the 2008 and 2009 global financial crises and eurozone crises, you actually see a pretty marked split where the dollar's share surges upward from 45 to almost 65 and the euro share plunges from 35 to almost 20. And the fact that this relative roles of these currencies is less stable than we otherwise thought to us suggests that it's going to be important, uh, you know, for example, for investors and policymakers alike to pay attention to how these international currency status uh, evolves in response to monetary policy, fiscal policy, or even policies like China's push to internationalize the renminbi. And these policies might have important dynamics uh, for cross-border flows um, and international bond portfolios.